it scared the crap out of us. And it mobilized us. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for events or happenings on live television that left us amazed, shocked, or emotional. I looked up and I saw one of our chief engineers in tears. We can't get the crew, she said. They've been incommunicado. Number 10, JFK addresses the Cuban Missile Crisis. Good evening, my fellow citizens. The 1960s were fraught with Cold War tension, and this is best exemplified through the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962. The public became aware of the crisis on the night of October 22, when President John F. Kennedy made a televised address explaining that Soviet missiles were found in Cuba. This sudden, clandestine decision to station strategic weapons for the first time outside of Soviet soil is a deliberately provocative an unjustified change in the status quo. Said missiles were capable of flying to the mainland United States and destroying major cities. Each of these missiles, in short, is capable of striking Washington, D.C., the Panama Canal, Cape Canaveral, Mexico City, or any other city in the southeastern part of the United States. This caused understandable panic as many citizens feared an impending nuclear war. Luckily, the panic lasted just six days as Soviet forces began dismantling the missile sites on October 28th. That was a very long week, and it all began with JFK's historic address to the nation. Our goal is not the victory of might, but the vindication of right. Not peace at the expense of freedom, but both peace and freedom here in this hemisphere and we hope around the world, God willing, that goal will be achieved. Thank you and good night. Number 9. The Max Headroom Hijacking While it's now a famous piece of history, we couldn't imagine the confusion of seeing the Max Headroom hijacking the first time. The first incident occurred at 9pm on Chicago's WGN-TV, when a sports broadcast was interrupted by someone wearing a Max Headroom mask. The intrusion lasted just 17 seconds, and the Max figure never spoke. The second incident was far more detailed, occurring at 11.20 and interrupting an episode of Doctor Who. Because he's a freaking nerd. <laughs> I think I'm gonna The Max figure made various pop culture references and conducted troll-like behavior for a solid 90 seconds before the broadcast was intentionally ended by the hijackers. My brother wearing the other one. <laughs> the pirate transmission understandably confused many viewers, and the culprits have never been identified. Take some pretty sophisticated uh, microwave equipment operating in the broadcast uh, auxiliary frequency bands and uh, a significant amount of power. Number 8. The Assassination of Lee Harvey Oswald we return to John F. Kennedy, who was tragically assassinated by Lee Harvey Oswald on November 22, 1963. Just two days later, Oswald himself was dead at the hands of nightclub owner Jack Ruby. At 11.21 a.m. on November 24, Oswald was leaving the Dallas police headquarters for the nearby county jail. As this was a huge news story, Oswald's transfer was being broadcast live on NBC. Therefore, viewers watched in real time as Ruby approached Oswald and shot him in the abdomen. Oswald was rushed to Parkland Memorial Hospital and pronounced dead at 1.07 p.m. While nothing graphic was seen, it's still extraordinarily shocking to watch a shooting as it occurs. When Jack Ruby killed Lee Harvey Oswald, there went our ability to question the one man who pulled the trigger. Number 7. The O.J. Simpson Bronco Chase When it comes to live TV moments from the 90s, the infamous O.J. Simpson Bronco Chase is right up there. And there you see just a huge number of police cars, CHP, Orange County Sheriff, LAPD, presumably Los Angeles County uh, Police Department as well, as well as LA County Sheriff's cars, all a respectful distance behind just waiting, hopefully, for this to play itself out peacefully. It occurred on June 17, 1994, shortly after the formal football star was charged with the murder of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman. The police arrived at the home of Robert Kardashian to arrest Simpson, but he had fled with Al Cowlings in a white Ford Bronco. The vehicle is registered to Al Cowling, a former teammate, close friend of O.J. Simpson's, who has been a fugitive from justice now almost 12 hours. 
The resulting chase across the LA highway system was televised live, reaching nearly 100 million viewers. It was such a huge event that every major network interrupted their programming to air the chase. I know that he's just feeling like everything is going against him right now, but he's not doing himself any good by just proceeding like this. And it was a Hollywood thriller playing out in real life, and no one could really believe it was happening. Number 6. Christian Eriksen Collapses on the Field A prominent Danish soccer player, Christian Eriksen, was competing at Euro 2020 when a horrifying incident occurred. Shortly before half-time, Eriksen stumbled and collapsed on the pitch after suffering a cardiac arrest. While he was immediately attended to, the medical process was incredibly difficult to watch. Players and fans watched in silent worry as the medical team desperately administered CPR. Even worse was seeing Ericsson's partner, Sabrina Jensen, being comforted by teammates. The BBC received up to 6,000 complaints from distraught viewers who had grown upset over the visuals. And the Denmark head coach says it was wrong to ask the players to resume the match. Players who is in, in, in a shock condition, players who, who is who, who almost, and they don't really know yet if they lost their best friend. Uh, and they have to decide. Luckily, Ericsson would make a full recovery and return to soccer just eight months later. <laughs> Number 5. The Tam Luang Cave Rescue The advent of social media has allowed us to follow breaking news not just on TV, but on our phones and tablets. As such, the entire Tam Luang Cave Rescue was broadcast live for 18 days between June 23rd and July 10th, 2018. Rescue teams drilling holes using ultrasonic sensors, dropping maps and care packages through small crevices in the hope that the team was alive. A Thai soccer team and one of their coaches entered a cave in northern Thailand and became trapped after monsoon rain flooded the system. What stands between the boys and the daylight they haven't seen in two weeks is about a mile and a half underground obstacle course of rocky chambers, half-flooded canals and fully submerged sections. This prompted an enormous international response as governments from all over the world sent aid and assistance in extracting the team. After weeks of planning, the rescue itself was conducted between July 8th and the 10th and was extensively covered in the media. We are coming, it's okay. It's okay. Many people are coming. Many, many people. We are the first. Many people come. Everyone was rescued without injury, but two responders tragically died in the process. We were not scared. We knew that people would try to help us and we try to support each other when we're in there. Number 4. 9-11 September 11th, 2001 is a date that will never be forgotten. We believe that a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center in New York. The horror began at 8.46 in the morning and lasted all day, with most people foregoing work and school to follow the proceedings on live TV. Everyone alive at the time remembers where they were when they first learned of the attacks and remembers being glued to the TV watching them unfold. There are literally thousands of emergency crews here. We've seen some from Long Island, we've seen some from New Jersey, some from Connecticut, we understand. The day was filled with some truly unforgettably terrifying imagery, like the South Tower being hit by United Airlines Flight 175 and both towers collapsing in a surreal shower of steel and dust. We knew we were watching a world-changing event, and as much as we wanted to, we just couldn't look away. I mean, it took us a long time to function as humans, and that's for us. We were covering it. Number three, the Waco Siege. For 51 days in 1993, Mount Carmel Center outside Waco, Texas, was the site of a siege involving the FBI. The building belonged to a cult known as the Branch Davidians, who were suspected of owning illegal weapons. Many Waco residents had never heard of the Branch Davidians before today, despite the cult's existence here since the 1930s. A massive shootout occurred when the ATF attempted to take the guns, prompting the 51-day siege by the FBI. We understand negotiations are going on as we speak. They may continue, of course, with darkfall approaching into the night, but the federal agents have said that they are not going to storm this, if at all possible. The storm 
story was extensively covered in the media, but nothing could have prepared viewers for the story's dramatic conclusion. Now the word out here tonight, Dave, is that this has basically been a, a media party of speculation because we have got no official word from any kind of authority exactly what is going on. A fire destroyed the building and killed 76 people. The blaze was captured by various news networks, including CNN, and people could only watch in speechless agony as the compound burned to the ground. It's a tragedy of uh, immense dimensions, I think. Number two, the Challenger disaster. Usually the night before, I, I had the same nightmare that what I saw today, and uh, I thought it was a dream. The lead up to the Challenger disaster made a tragic situation even more so. Ronald Reagan had created the Teacher in Space project, which would bring everyday teachers beyond Earth's atmosphere and hopefully inspire an interest in science and space exploration. Krista McAuliffe of New Hampshire was the first teacher chosen for the project, and she was scheduled to fly on the Challenger in January of 1986. Her involvement spurred great national interest in the mission, and millions of children across the country watched the launch on live television. Four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Unfortunately, they were subjected to a horrible sight when the Challenger exploded in mid-air, killing everyone on board. At 11.40 a.m. this morning, space program experienced a national tragedy with the explosion of the space shuttle Challenger approximately a minute and a half after launch from here at the Kennedy Space Center. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Moon Landing Hello Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made. On July 21st, 1969, Neil Armstrong became the first human being to step foot on the moon. This was the end result of the very expensive, collaborative, brilliant and meticulous Apollo program, which had been conceived only nine years earlier. Fantastic feeling. I was one of uh, great accomplishment. It was almost miraculous. We did it for all the right reasons. An estimated 650 million people watched Armstrong take the first step on live TV. And what an unbelievable experience it was. Not only had we landed on the moon, but we were watching images on TV that were being broadcast live from space. People who watched it never forgot, and people who didn't wished they had. Such is the power of a once-in-a-lifetime event. That's one small step for man. Did you happen to see any of these on live TV? Let us know in the comments below. It's happening! Come on, come on, let's go, let's go, come on! Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.